With the ABC News exclusive, our interview with President Zelensky of Ukraine. His plea for help tonight from the U.S. and NATO, what he says he needs most right now. And it comes amid a worsening scene across much of Ukraine these last 24 hours. Civilians coming under attack while trying to flee to safety. President Zelensky saying Kyiv and other cities are being bombarded. Tonight, those civilians under fire as they flee the violence. And we warn you, these images are difficult. A mortar shell exploding along the escape route from the city of Irpin at 16 miles northwest of Kyiv. Stunned people watching, then rushing across the street to help the injured. But not everyone could be saved. Eight people were killed, including at least three members of the same family. The U.S. Secretary of State has said the U.S. is investigating credible reports civilians have been targeted by the Russians. If so, he said, they would be war crimes. And then the sound of shelling along that same route, people throwing themselves to the ground, dropping their luggage behind, grabbing their children's hands. This is what they're now facing as they're trying to flee to safety. Soldiers stepping in, lifting children over barriers, helping with their bags and luggage, putting toddlers into strollers, helping families stay together. And so often along the way, it has been President Zelensky signaling to the Ukrainian people he is there, he is not leaving. That Facebook message the morning after the unprovoked invasion began, saying we are here, vowing he will not leave. In my interview with him here tonight, he praises the Ukrainian people's unprecedented courage, saying we will endure. Tonight, President Zelensky, who talked with President Biden again over the weekend, we asked Zelensky what he needs most, what he's asking for from the U.S. And tonight here, his message to Vladimir Putin. And at the very end of our interview, his message in English to the American people. Tonight, our interview, his words with help from a Ukrainian government translator in the room at the office of the president in Kyiv. Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us. We're aware of the situation around Kyiv right now, the fighting to the north, uh, the fighting to the west. What is the situation right now on the ground there, and, and how long do you think you can keep the capital of Kyiv? We are being bombarded not only in the city of Kyiv, um, not only in the housing sectors, but also in the suburbs of Kyiv. You can't even recognize um, the way that our capital looks right now. The city of Kharkiv, Vinitsa, Odessa, Zhutomir, Chernihiv, Mariupol, many cities are being bombed. I know you're aware of the reality on the ground when you list all of those cities where there is Russian bombardment right now, the Russians closing in. Uh, the Pentagon, uh, of course, here in the U.S., believes that about 95 percent of Russian troops that have been amassed along the Ukrainian border are now inside Ukraine. That would be nearly 150,000 troops. How long can the Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian people hold off the Russians? I'm sure that Ukrainians are prepared uh, to stand against Russia f for their entire lives. Even the cities that were occupied by a Russian military, they have seen the response and feedback from ordinary people. These ordinary people didn't have machine guns. This courage is something that is unprecedented and Russian soldiers don't even have uh, that courage. The problem is that for one soldier of Ukraine, we have 10 Russian soldiers, and for one Ukrainian tank, we have 50 Russian tanks, but we are destroying them, and this difference is that the gap is closing. But the question is, how long can we withstand? Many things depend not just on us. We will endure, and even if they come into all our cities, there will be insurgency, insurgent war, and no one will give away our independence. Today, war is here. Tomorrow, it will be in Lithuania, then in Poland, then in Germany. This is serious. United States is far away, but in recent days, I do feel that United States are closer to us. I know you spoke with President Biden again. I'm curious, what's the most important thing you're asking the president for, asking the U.S. for right now? I told him that for us, the most important today is the security in the sky. We cannot uh, allow Russia to be active there only because they're bombing us, they are shelling us, they are bombing us, they're sending m missiles, helicopters, jet fighters. So a lot of things, uh, but we are not doing this because we don't have the sky. We don't 
control our sky. The president and NATO have said no to this no-fly zone because of concerns this could trigger a much wider a conflict, a much a bigger war than what we're seeing uh, already because there would have to be a willingness to shoot Russian planes out of the sky. Do you understand that concern? What do you mean to shoot down Russian planes? If the missile is flying, yesterday, for example, the missile hit the university in the city of Kharkiv and the dormitory, and the same uh, missile uh, hit the tumor uh, pediatric clinic um, in Kyiv. So if this missile is flying, so are you thinking whether to shoot it down or not? I think there is no any other answer but to yes, yes, they sh need to be shot down. You have to preserve, preserve lives. I'm sure that the brave uh, American soldiers who would be shooting it down, knowing that it's flying towards the students, I'm sure that they had no doubt in doing so. Mr. President, I know that no one questions the horror unfolding in Ukraine right now. What the president has said here, uh, and lawmakers really in both parties, Republicans and Democrats, have stood behind the president on this. The concern about uh, protecting and enforcing a no-fly zone over Ukraine would then lead to the possibility it would draw the U.S. into a wider war with Russia, that they're simply not willing to do that. We are a place in Europe, a place of freedom, a zone of freedom. And uh, um, everyone thinks that we are far away from America or Canada. Uh, no, we are this zone of freedom. And when the limits of uh, rights and freedoms are being violated and stepped on, then you have to protect us because we will come first, you will come second, because the more this beast will eat, he wants more, more and more. Mr. President, you talked about the need for fighter jets. We know the U.S. is uh, reportedly looking at how to supply Russian uh, jets from Poland. Uh, you, had, you had requested these jets because Ukrainian fighter pilots know how to fly these Russian planes. Has there been any movement on that front? We asked not only the United States, we asked many other countries. I'm not going to name them. We looked into this question. We know where these Soviet planes are stationed, which countries host them, and we asked these countries. And in many ways, it is the United States in many ways who will decide. Do you believe the president could be doing more to help? I'm sure that the president can do more. I'm sure he can, and I would like to believe that, that he's capable of doing that. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said just in the last uh, 24 hours that the U.S. is looking uh, at credible reports that civilians have been intentionally targeted there uh, in Ukraine, saying if so, it would be a war crime. We, of course, have seen these horrific images uh, in these last few hours. Do you believe that Putin is deliberately attacking civilians? Why, why would I care? The result is the same. People are dying. The bombardment of the schools and kindergartens, the universities, the dormitory, the bombardment of uh, a nuclear power plant without even thinking that Europe may disappear if it really hits the unit. Every minute, every hour, every day, the same things are happening. People are dying. Do you believe Putin is a war criminal? I think that all people who came to our land, all people who gave those orders, all uh, soldiers who were shooting, they're all war criminals. Let me ask you, Mr. President, it's believed the U.S. and the West have offered help to get you out of that country alive if it comes to that. Have they made that offer, and how long will you stay? Yes, I was offered, because there was a loss of information and uh, several special, uh, special groups who were sent to uh, kill me and uh, my family. I said no, because how can I do this? I'm the citizen of my uh, country and uh, I'm the um, elected president of these people. So you will stay until the end, no matter what that means? 
jak u was w amerykańskich filmach. Well, I would like the end to be like in the Hollywood movies, the happy end for our country. What would you like to say to Vladimir Putin right now? I think he is capable of stopping the war that he started. And even if he doesn't think that he was the one who started, he should know one important thing, a thing that uh, cannot uh, deny that stopping the war is what he's capable of. For the American people and for the people of the West who have been moved by your resilience and by the bravery of the Ukrainian people, do you have a message for them? Uh, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. You know, you know what, what to say to Americans. I, ju I just want you to feel and to understand what does it mean for us freedom. Because always American people, uh, they speak about freedom and they, and, and they know what is it. And now when you are looking at Ukrainians, I think you feel what does it mean for us. So we are not far from you. We are not far from you. And that's why Americans, if you see, and if you understand how we feel life, how we fight against all the enemies for our freedom, support us. Support us, and not only with words, with concrete, direct steps. Do it, and you. And I think, I think we'll 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 win, of course, together with all the with all the world. And late today, President Zelensky addressing the people of Ukraine, telling them, "We're not scared because you're not scared." Zelensky speaking from his presidential office during that message, and that's where he was for our interview earlier today. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.